Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today we're here at the Compass to spread the message of freedom. And I'm here with my best friend. I'm Tyler, VCU student, junior. And he's got a lot of good content too on YouTube. A lot of great interviews around here with the local community, and you can find that on where could you and tell us? It's uh, overheard on wvcw.org. And pretty soon we'll have a page on uh, Liberate RVA. So look for that on the website. Thank you for watching, and please share it and subscribe if you can. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna start setting up right now. So take good care, and uh, see you at the victory party. So that's uh, so that's the contradiction. That's the that's the matrix. That's the uh, the hidden violence behind government. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, people in power are always kind of crazy. I think it doesn't matter who you are. If you're in a position of power, it'll always get to your head. And I think that people in the government just, I mean, it stops being about the people. I mean, it's if, for any, if anything, the only real difference you can make is being involved in like local government, which involves a lot of like time and a lot of people don't really have time to put that into it. So, I mean... That's my thoughts. Right, 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 right. Yeah. No, that, that's yeah, and um, yeah, please, so locally we'll we'll think that you can make that kind of change. But again, you'll find like, well, you were mentioning one good, uh, good point in the beginning that uh, it does become an addiction to, to that power. You know, even in the end, you know, Frodo couldn't let go of that ring. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, and, and there's a lot of science out there that says uh, political power is just as addictive as cocaine. You know, it, it, it uh, the sensors, the wiring inside the brains, is, kicks off the same kind of signal. Uh, so yeah, I would say political power corrupts anyone that wields it. Uh, and so I'm, I'm pretty much here talking. I guess trying to. I'm here part of an organization called Liberate RVA. Pretty much just turning to our community to find nonviolent solutions and turn away from that. That only knows how to use violence to solve problems. Right? Uh, I guess we, we can recognize the, the the truth that the government has a monopoly on a lot of services and goods that they force us to use and pay for it. Right? You can't unsubscribe, cancel, or pay me like Netflix. Last yeah. year they tried to raise their prices and people say, like, Oh, forget that. Cancel, unsubscribe, go to Hulu. Yeah. Right. But you can't do that with their with their services, even if it's no. harmful and abusive. Right, so that's that's pretty much the direction I want to go. You know, let's yeah. let's turn to our community. Let's go to the foundation of nonviolent solutions that everybody applies. Well, this is where you have to start. You got to start small. And Thank then you. Yeah. If you start small, will make a big difference. I think so. I think so too. Well, this is great. Okay, yeah. my name is Cal. Nice meeting you. I'm you Sophia. Too. Sophia, pleasure. Well, uh, this oh, so actually, this philosophy is called anarchy. I guess I'll I'll, I'll, I'll round it up. Uh, so anarchy, by definition, means without rulers. Like in science, anions and cations, ions being without. Archy means political rulers. Like monarchy means one political ruler. None. Anarchy means none. We don't need political rulers. Strangers, pretty much, arbitrating, dictating how our lives should be left, best left, right? So right. We, we can have rules. We just don't need the political rulers. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Let me give you a pamphlet then. Um, we. So here's a. Uh, oh, come on. All right. Is a anarchy pamphlet and a piece of parenting pamphlet. I have another one, but I kind of ran out. So we pretty much meet monthly. It's a philosophical well, uh, gathering. Just pretty much talk about a lot of these issues and uh, trying to get to that better place. All right. Well, thank you very much. Right, thank you, Sophia. Yeah. Take good care. Bye. So this is that's the point in the direction I'm trying to talk about. Let's turn to our community and turn away from that which that only knows how to solve problems through violence. So you're saying that like instead of like. Like large things that people get shouldn't be public. Like they should be like privately owned or whatever. Yeah. And then like people should just like go after whatever they want to go after. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, exactly, exactly. Like even roads, for example, like infrastructure, the government yeah. doesn't build any of that stuff. They, they take your money and they give it to the, like the contractors. Yes, right? Yeah. So they don't build anything in the first place. So they're like in the, they're the middle man, you know, from getting in the way of you actually choosing a better person to fill the potholes finally for once, you know? Yeah. So it doesn't feel like we're driving on the moon here on Richmond, right? Yeah. Well, so. so well, all right, let's say, let's say right now after you leave, you're walking like home or whatever like that and you get hit by a car. Okay. Who picks you up? What happens? All right, great question. Okay, so here's, here's an interesting uh, alternative non-violent solution that already exists, right? Like when you drive, you're covered by insurance, right? And this protects you from the... Uh, no, I mean you literally get hit by a car. I get hit by a car. That person has insurance, so their insurance company will pay me, right? No, I mean like what's going to happen to you? Like what ambulance is going to come after you if okay. there's no government? All right, there's no government. We still have hospitals. There used to there used to be a lot of hospitals before government started privatizing Medicaid, Medicare. Doctors really welcome people. Say, look, you don't have enough. Let's trade in eggs. Let's trade in other goods. They had a freedom to trade, right? So before, they, 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 yeah, before they even regulated uh, fire trucks, they actually had multiple jurisdictions responding to one fire. And whoever was there first was the one actually going to put it out. And you got money 
off of putting out the fire, just like you get money but picking up someone. So you'd have multiple, you'd have more people. Where do you get the here. money from? Though? All right, that's, well, that's a good question. All right, so there's already volunteer firefighters, right? Yeah. So you right. have people who volunteer. I mean, there's going to be people. What about these people who are injured? What about these the poor? What about this? Which is a great question because everybody's still concerned, right? But it means that we care, we have an interest in that, right? But unfortunately, we don't really have a much of choice of who actually gets to provide that. Yeah. Right? You don't, you don't even have a much of choice if you, you can be entrepreneur enough to provide a better service or compete. Right? So money is a good, good point because actually that's another hidden violence that the government has. They also have a monopoly on currency. Correct. Right? Like before 1913, there used to be a variety of different kind of money. Uh, towns had money, banks had money. It was a comp competition, right? Yeah. It wasn't forced. 1913 said, sorry, no one's allowed to compete with the US dollar and they created a monopoly. And anytime you have a monopoly on anything, the quality always goes down. Well, I disagree with that because like, for instance, like, I'm from Chicago, but if I if I came here, how would I buy things? Like, would I have to trade with somebody like like a fucking like 1730s like Native American? I would. I want to be able to use the same money as anybody anywhere. Sure. In the yeah. States, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the thing is, I wouldn't want to force. Uh, my a currency is kind of like a paper clip or a car. So you know they're good, right? Yeah. So the thing is, I wouldn't threaten anyone if they want to compete and provide a better currency. But the thing is, with the dollar today, it's lost over 97% of its value. 97%, that hurts the poor the worst because there's no incentive to save. It depreciates in value every time you hide it on your bed mattress, right? Uh, so there's another currency out there. Have you ever heard of Bitcoin? Yeah. All right, it's a digital Wait, currency. Bitcoins? Bitcoin. Bitcoin's like the thing on the internet. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network. Government hates it because they can't regulate it, they can't tax it. And uh, so with Bitcoin, it start, the value is starting to, to go up because you have actual scarcity in there, right? Yeah. So with that scarcity, there's real value. Uh, Reddit is starting to use it. WordPress yeah. is starting to use it, right? Like people on Tor Network. Exactly. Actually, I have a I have an app on my phone to trade. That's how easy it's gotten now to yeah. trade Bitcoins. You know, that's and a lot of merchants, a lot of retailers, like especially I like, believe in uh, Texas, are starting to use this stuff. In Chicago, New Hampshire, uh, I have some friends here in, in Richmond too. So that's that's pretty much the direction, right? And at least like there's a guy a few years ago who tried to create his own currency called the Liberty Dollar. Yeah. Iris Kane sees all his assets, threw him in a cage. Well, because that guy probably uses like services from... All right, here's my thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that no matter what you're using, you're like, you're using a service from the government, so it's not free. You know what I mean? Like you're paying taxes to stand on this concrete as sure. opposed to standing on dirt. You know what I'm saying? There used to be roads before. So yeah, if, okay, you, sorry, go ahead. If, if things are privatized, you'd be paying for literally everything in your daily life. Right. So, but wouldn't it be the exact same thing as just paying one single tax and getting everything for free? Uh, unfortunately, you have no choice where that goes. And there's such, uh, such an inefficiency of where that money goes. So you, it, it, that, it, that's why the, the cost always increases. That's why uh, it's 40, 50% of your income now that's still in that gunpoint to pay for these services. And they only increases every year. Uh, whereas, uh, I guess, in, in a, like, right, look at plasma screen TVs that came out a few years ago, right? About maybe 10 years ago. They cost several thousand dollars. You know, they're kind of bulky still. They're, these are flat screen plasma TVs. Today, you can buy a cheaper one for a few hundred bucks, a much better quality, a much better version. You know, I may not be able to afford an iPhone 5, but I can surely afford an iPhone 2 or 3 by now, right? Yes. The, the, the cost always goes down because there's competition. There's no competition on roads because they have a monopoly on roads, which is why we can't really see the hidden true cost of what it would be like in a free market when people could compete and provide you something better quality, something better. The truth is that it would just be cheaper. Even healthcare would be cheaper, everything would be cheaper. So you talk yeah. about spending money, and like not only that, but the reason you have in, if the only reason you have infrastructure is because the people who want you to trade with them need the infrastructure there in the first place. So they would probably pay a bigger portion than you just because they want you to have access to their goods and services. Well, I don't know. I just, I just don't understand how things in daily life like could be the exact same in like a society with government and without government. Okay. Because like everything has to get paid for one way or another. Right, and, and, and that could be more efficiently handled through you as the consumer. Right. You can you can choose which one's going to provide better. But that's. To that. But isn't that why the government's there? So like so, not every single person has to like decide where to allot money to every single thing. Uh. Well, no, because the thing is that you don't really have a choice in whether you, you can opt out, right? You can't even compete. Like the Liberty Dollar, he tried to compete. Like if you if you had a business that you can compete, you wouldn't threaten violence on another person if they wanted to compete too, right? Yes. Like, all right, for example, uh, like mail, for example, first class mail, the USPS. A hundred years ago, there's a guy who competed against the USPS. He brought the prices down. He made it more efficient, more effective to deliver just this mail, right? Because in the Constitution it says they could create a postal service, yes. but it didn't say they gave them the exclusive right 
a monopoly. So he said, well, that means I can compete too. His name was Lysander Spooner and he competed. And, uh, he, and he, he did it so much better than them. He was able to drop down the market prices because before all, it was only the USPS. And the prices were so astronomical. And so because he competed, it, it, it worked, it was happening. But of course they, they, they tried to take him to court. Uh, he won a lot of the appeals, but then Congress has said, well, we're just gonna write a law that says you're not allowed to compete. Just a piece of paper, whip of the pen, and he lost And his then business. gradually the prices start going back up. Right, yes, yeah, so they forced him out of business because of the monopoly on law. So it's, there's a lot of things we can't see today that would, because they have that monopoly. That was, sometimes it's hard to see what, what it could be like. But there's a guy who did, who did show what it could have been like. You know, like FedEx and UPS can only deliver packages. They can't deliver pieces of paper, right? They have, the post office has a monopoly in first class mail. You know, it, it's, the rise of stamps has increased over 150%. Right, so that's, that's what I mean, like it's, the cost always goes up. So many people say, you know, like, how do you feel about the rise of stamps? It's, it's not like you have much of a choice, <laughs> right? Uh, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much, uh, well, I have a lot, I have a pamphlet I'd like to give you. Well, this philosophy is called anarchy. Anarchy by definition, like in science, ans means anions and cations, archy means rulers. Yeah, no, I get it, I mean, yeah, yeah I'm not, I know. I'm not, okay, all right, cool, I'm cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. awesome, this is really cool, then. my name is Cal. All right, nice. Yeah, yeah, let me, uh, Eli. So the thing is, uh, we can have rules. Uh, dude, yeah, I know. I, I see the armband. Like I get it. You okay, cool, like, cool. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's where I want to go. We can have rules. We can have a uh, apartment complex that's 420 for any one across the street. That's not right. We can have a polycentric legal system, a real free market, not a state-controlled market, right? Yeah, but see, my problem is, I feel like this, this kind of government has been tried before. You know, I don't see any anarchist governments around today. But it's because it's, it, it doesn't involve government. It involves a free and voluntary. All right, not society. anarchist government. Anarchist societies. Well, okay. I feel like they've all failed. Well, they've never, there's never been one. There's never really, uh, the closest one maybe could have been attempted was in Iceland. It lasted for several hundred years, but they had only one aspect of government in there. It was the lawgiver. And because of that one government official, people were able to bribe him in the end and the whole thing collapsed. That one exception to violence, the one exception for government was it's what caused it to finally to, to crumble and end, right? So the thing is, so I mean, government has already been tried for like th thousands of years and hasn't gone anywhere. It always becomes unsustainable, and then eventually looks like Detroit, right? Uh, but you look at Detroit though, because it's unsustainable. There's not enough wealth to steal. There, there are people out there now pro providing services that the state can't. Like it takes an hour for the police to respond. There's this guy who created his own security services. These neighborhoods are voluntary paying for it. He's not going to throw you into a cage for a victimless crime, right? And and and, and this is this is going on in Detroit. Right, because uh, because the cops can't no, or they're unsustainable. The cops can't respond. They can't provide that service anymore. So uh, there's another guy too who bought four buses because mass transit system is shutting down. Paying these four buses to reflect the geographic region of the neighborhood, and these buses will pick you up wherever you are. No centralized planning route. Text them, call them wherever you are. They'll pick you up. There's what? There's Wi-Fi on these buses. There's music on these buses. There is BYOB on these buses because there's no longer a monopoly on law for the state to enforce because there's really nobody out there anymore. So you'll find this freedom to express, this freedom to create, to make it actually kind of fun and enjoyable. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah. If somebody paid you $2,000, would you move to Detroit? Move to Detroit? No, no, because this is my home. You know, I, we were talking about change and stuff like that uh, like uh, earlier. For me, change begins with myself, you know, at home, you know, with my own interpersonal relationship with my friends and at, at home here in Richmond. This is where I draw my moral line. You know, the most I can do is just put that spotlight to see what other cities can follow and, and, and do the same thing too. Um, and then that's the most that I can do. You know, there are anarchist groups. Yeah, there's actually a liberate, there's, uh, there's an anarchist group over there too right now, actually trying to do the same thing we're doing here and trying to move towards our community and turn away from government. You also had like rogue teachers this summer walk into these decimated school buildings and actually start holding classes. Like, yeah. no age discrimination, no grade discrimination. Let's learn some stuff. Because, yeah, you just don't have these schools. So yeah, we're part of Liberate RBA. It's a, it's a non-political organization. It's pretty much, let's go of politics. You know, let's, let's go of the illusion that voting will set us free. You know, so what, again, we're talking about cannabis. So what if they legalize it tomorrow? How long did that take, right? 75 years, it's not a measure of success to gain one scrap of our freedoms, but to have lost so many others in the same amount of time. Right? But the government's in there as a measure, a measure of success to defend our freedoms or grant us more freedoms. You know, it's, sorry, it's failed already. Yeah. Right? It's always, uh, you know, it, it just continues. Every every law is just another way to kind of restrict our, our capability to, 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 to be free. Yeah. You know? So, no, this is really cool. It's interesting that uh, you've heard of anarchy. Could, could you, if you have one more minute, can you tell me where you've heard of this or where maybe perhaps... Uh, just like, just like read about it. Yeah? yeah. 
like I know all the guys like Long Kui, like all those uh, old French guys. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I get it. Yeah, I know. I know about like all the roots of it and everything. Right. I'm just not really familiar with like the today's anarchy. Right. So. Oh, yeah. so today's anarchy is pretty much universalizing that violence. You can't just say state violence is wrong, but the violence we do to each other is okay, right? Yeah. It has to be all violence. The violence we do to each other is, is wrong, and also the violence to some of the children, right? Universalize the principle, otherwise it becomes a preference, right? Yeah. And, and actually start with that on that foundation. And I think that's for, for the most part, people who tried anarchy in the past and never did it. They try to do it through violence to, to end a system that only knows how to solve problems to violence. So you're, you're still using the government tools to solve problems, right? Yeah. So uh, for me, I find that's why it never really got anywhere. So. All right, well, we got to roll. Yeah, yeah, no, pleasure. Bad, 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 bad. No, no, this is a lot of fun. Take good care. All right, thanks. And that's the Matrix. That's the stuff that they will never, you know, that's publicly want to talk movie. about. Yeah. <laughs> you just, you just check out, okay. But uh, yeah, if you got a good idea, you got a good product, people are going to come around. People are going to support you. You don't have to take money from them to do it. All right. So are you guys uh, uh, advertising your philosophy? or? Yeah, so the philosophy, uh, so we're part of an organization called Liberate RVA. Let's turn to our community and turn away from government. Turn away from that which that only knows how to solve problems through the threat of and use of violence, right? Okay. Uh, so this philosophy is called anarchy. You know, anarchy by definition means uh, without political rulers. Like in science means anions and cations, ands means with without. Archy means rulers. Like monarchy, one political ruler. Anarchy means without political rulers. We can have rules. Yeah. There's just no yeah. need for political rulers. So, so yeah. is it community-based yes. control? So yeah. it would be like... Um, like a tribunal almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have polycentric law. Mm -hmm. You can have an okay. apartment complex that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. Mm -hmm. All right? You realize the truth about what government is is that they have a violent monopoly on law. They have a monopoly on roads, on security, on judges, on courts, on schools. You can't opt out, cancel a payment, unsubscribe, and go to, or have the freedom to provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to the people paying their yeah. salaries. Right? We're not even in the first level of it. We're in the evolution after that monopoly. You know, the monopoly of the cars were like you know, cars, roads were. Yeah, yeah. Now, we're not only just societies with cars. We're societies designed around cars. Like we have roads separating our uh, settlements, so we, you know, we can't walk anywhere anymore. Yeah, right. Because I, I personally can't get a car. I am limited to what I can go to. In my it's, it's very so it's almost like we're in the second level of the monopoly, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. we put these values forward, and eventually, no one will want to play monopoly. You know, everyone will realize it's just genuinely a bad thing yeah. to have only one entity control of a service anyone can take part in. Yeah. So, do you guys have like a group that uh, we join or talk about, or a club or something yeah, like that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we meet monthly. We have a freedom gather every month. It's a philosophical discussion. Okay. Uh, actually, there's one next Friday. Uh, so it's less than a five-minute bike ride from here. Okay. Uh, you, you guys were talking about roads, for example. Uh, so like there's places in Europe where the government just removed itself out of like traffic lights and traffic stop signs and things improved, right? It became more of a shared traveling experience, yeah. right? Uh, traffic accidents went down. Traffic congestion went down. You know, it's kind of like when you walk across the street, you look both ways. When you're driving a car, you're not looking at the street, you're looking at the light. You know, orange means go yeah. even faster, right? Yeah. <laughs> there's no eye contact with one another. Yeah. Right? So you'll find like things improve whenever government uh, let's go of that monopoly and let's go of, of that of these complex solutions that you know us as individuals can find a better way a non-violent way to to go to yeah. uh, so let me give you our, our pamphlet then yeah. uh okay. you guys are meeting you said next friday yes next okay. uh friday do you know where specifically uh yeah it's all on the website it's uh, on the liberate rva website right. uh um, you go to the events page and uh it's called the maplewood anarchy garden if you have an extra pair yeah I yeah yeah, yeah. One of my absolutely absolutely Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my name is Cal. Right, I'm Nathan. Nathan, uh, pleasure to meet you, Nathan. Ilya. What is it? Ilya. Ilya? Pleasure. Uh, this is Tyler. my friend Tyler. Like what? Nathan. All right, great, guys. We'll see you guys later. Yeah, of course. We'll, uh, we'll make it to the meeting. All uh, right, great, great, great. You guys take good care. Good luck to you. Thank you, thank you. Versus a plurality of non-violent solutions that us three already shared. Right, and that's the hidden violence, that's the immorality of that. That contradicts that for which we're already against, right? The, the state, the government has a monopoly on law. They have a monopoly on security. They have a monopoly on courts, on judges, on roads. You can't opt out, cancel a payment, unsubscribe, or have the freedom to compete and provide a better service that's not going to be abusive and harmful to the people paying their salaries. So what, what are your thoughts on that? Is it I don't more? like the government. Yeah. Is it more? Good man, good, good. So, so I'm out here just advocating, let's turn to our community and turn away from government. Let's turn away from, you know, we can have rules. There's just no need for political rulers, strangers, arbitrarily dictating how best our lives should be lived. Right? We can have an apartment complex, front, uh, that's, uh, apartment complex that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. 
we can have communities of preferences. We can have a polycentric law system, right? The freedom to compete, the freedom to, to provide and create without being forced by, by this one monopoly on all these services. They even have a monopoly on first class mail. Yeah. You know, you, you have a monopoly even on uh, just those spirits, you know, the ABC. So, uh, so that's the direction that I'm trying to go. The organization I'm with is called Liberate RBA. You know, liberate our community from the idea that violence will set us free. Not just state violence, but the violence we do to each other, and especially the violence on the children. Kind of universalizing that. And, and, and uh, I guess the philosophy, the philosophy is called anarchy. You know, like, uh, yeah. So by definition, like in science, ends means without it. Anons and catons, and means without. Archy means rulers, like monarchy. One political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. Again, we can have rules. There's just no need for these strangers arbitrating we'll big time. Right. right. So that's it. That's, that's what I'm out here to talk about, about this philosophy. That's what's up. Yeah? yeah? You guys are doing it? Okay, cool. Let me give you a pamphlet. I have a. Um, I can't wait. We're freaking out. I ain't with no coats, so don't even think about it. <laughs> Like, yeah. Yeah, I know, yeah. So the organization with, again, it's called Liberate RBA. It's a non-political organization. We just let go of politics. Let go of the illusion that voting was set us free. Let go of the illusion that government has a vested interest in protecting your life and Question. property and our happiness. Yes? Do you smoke cannabis? Yes. Okay, thank you. I just wanted you to be honest. Yes, oh, yeah, like completely you. honest. I have nothing yeah. to hide. Yeah, so like, what's your name? <laughs> My name is Cal. Cal. I like Cal Ripken, but with a K. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. my name is Capone. Nice to meet you. Capone? Pleasure to meet you, man. Pleasure to meet you. Appreciate Yours? it. It's Kyle. Kyle? Pleasure to meet you, man. All right, cool. This is yeah. great. Yeah, check us out. We got a website. We meet monthly and pretty much turning to our community and finding these solutions outside of government. All right, so, um, say, please, please, please. for the take effect, like we the government our own or whatever, how would money be dispersed? Even though money has no real value yeah. to it. I mean, like, how, like, how would people buy food, stuff like that? Like, cause they pretty much regulate all that stuff. That is, that's, that's a great question. Cause that's one of the biggest volume monopoly that they have. All right, money is like another good, another commodity, like a paper clip or a car. Before 1913, towns had their own money, banks had their own money. So there was a variety, plurality of different ways people traded different currencies. Yeah. 1913, they created a monopoly, saying no one's allowed to trade only with the US dollar. If you try to, uh, to create your own currency, they'll kidnap you and throw you into a cage like they did this guy a few years ago. He tried to create his own currency called the Liberty Dollar. IRS came in, seized his <laughs> assets, threw him in a cage. Yeah. So whenever you have a monopoly on anything though, the quality yeah. always goes down. Uh -huh. So 97% of the value of the dollar in your pocket today yeah, has been right. lost. Yeah. It's less than a dollar. Yeah, less than a dollar. Right. So it's hard for people to save, especially when you don't have that much to begin with with a tight budget. It's just depreciation in value every time you had it under your bed mattress. So without a government, without the monopoly, we have the freedom then to actually create real currency. They won't depreciate the value. There's actually a really interesting currency out there today. It's called Bitcoin. It's digital currency. The government hates it because they can't control it. They can't regulate it. They can't tax it. Uh, it's a peer-to-peer -peer network. Why haven't I ever heard about this? I know because they, they, they don't want you to know. They don't want you to know. It's Bitcoin. B-I-T-C-O-I-N. Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, Reddit is using it. WordPress is using it. Now they have apps. No, don't say so that. we can purely trade that. outside of government. Wow. And they have yeah, real they currency. Like yeah. This is there's currency. There's it real is, value in this. The government gonna catch you over there and they gonna fix it. Yeah, but yeah, but they can't because it's, uh, it's anonymous, so they can't figure it out. And that's why they hate. It's designed to be an underground currency. That's the sub. Right. So yeah. So that's a good question because that's that's really the foundation of all how they run. Yeah, they control your food and everything. Right. Yeah, you we would need some type of new currency because that wouldn't have no value if we start our own. And like, okay, we boycott me, fuck with y'all, right. fuck with us. So, right. Oh, excuse me. No, that's perfectly fine. No, honestly, it's fine. No, no. Yeah, I understand. Like, yeah, that's hot. Uh, and that's the rolling. thing, you have the freedom to compete. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's rolling. Yeah, Fuck yeah. the government. That's right. <laughs> Fuck the government. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm opinionated. <laughs> <laughs> Alright man, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thanks for coming out. Take good care guys. And so the truth is the government has a monopoly on these services. They have a monopoly on laws. They have a monopoly on courts, on judges, on security, on roads, on schools. You can't opt out like Netflix, try to raise your prices overnight. And people are, oh, forget that, cancel and subscribe, go to Hulu. Right? You don't even have the freedom to compete to provide a better service. It's not going to be harmful and abusive to the consumers. So what, what are your thoughts on that? Um, like, is there, or like the whole non-violent solution is easy for the individual to do, but for like controlling like mass, like an entire nation, I feel like you need to somehow uh, be able to like keep things under control. You yeah. Know and uh, the thing is, we, we don't need, uh, I mean, countries are nothing but arbitrary lines on a piece of paper. And it has to come down to the individual, because you can't show me your friends, your family, even Americans, without showing me individual people. Only individual people exist. 
right? Yeah. And objectively, so that's, that's the direction where it has to start. You know, change doesn't begin in a White House in D.C. It doesn't begin in countries we've never been to, you know, with ourselves at home in our own community. You know, for me, it starts here in Richmond. For me, it starts here drawing my moral lines, saying enough is enough. You now let's turn to our community and turn away from that, which not only knows how to solve problems to buy us, turn away from that matrix. Right? Yeah. And in turn to, to the solutions we already share, the, the moral foundation that we already have. Right? And we can still have security, we can still have roads, we can still have all this stuff. But at least you didn't have a freedom to compete. Freedom to, you know, you, you won't, it won't be like driving on the moon here on Richmond with all these potholes, you know? Um, so yeah, we can still have all these services, like in the same way um, that's already provided in a lot of different areas in our lives. But like, you have a lot of different cell phones you can choose, a lot of different, you know, freedom to compete in those areas, but not in the monopolized one that government controls. Uh, I don't know. I still feel like it wouldn't be as effective. You could not, like... Okay, okay. All right. Well, yeah. government in effect is not effective. Uh, it's, it's unsustainable. You look at Detroit, for example. That was government-run city, and now it's gone bankrupt. And that's what happens to every every single city. Uh, that's why you see all these meter maids all around, because it becomes unsustainable. You can't keep stealing everyone's wealth to keep funding something. Uh, anytime you have a monopoly on anything, though, the quality always goes down, which is why uh, this was why 40-50% of your income is now stolen through to taxation. Right? Yeah. It used to be maybe 1%, maybe 200 years ago, but it always increases. It always keeps going up and up because the thing is because it's constantly inefficient. It's like if you had a free market, like Plasma Screens TV that came out a few years ago. It cost several thousand dollars, but today you can buy a really good version, better model, just for a few hundred bucks. So if you have a real freedom of competition, prices goes down, you have better quality. But when you have a monopoly on anything, the, the cost goes up and you have poor quality. Right? And that's all that government is. I mean, the U.S. is number one at something, and that's kidnapping and imprisoning and dehumanizing more of his own people and prisoners than any other country in the world. Right? And that's what happens. So it always starts at the smallest city state before they turn into an empire. Right? So, I mean, again, I guess we're going back to cannabis early as an example. So what if they legalize it tomorrow? How long did that take? Well, how long did that take? 75 years is not a measure of success to gain one scraps of our freedom, but to have lost so many others at the same amount of time. Right? That's not a measure of success, especially if government is supposed to be defending our freedoms and granting us more freedoms. You hear about the National Defense Authorization Act. You hear about the Patriot Act. You know, a reform is another way of saying that the last 99 attempts didn't work. You know, if that was a real business, they go bankrupt and you have the freedom to compete and provide something better. You know? Uh, and earlier we were talking about currency. So unsustainability. Uh, so they also have a monopoly in currency on the dollar. Before 1930, people had the freedom to compete. People provided different currency and competition. In 1913, they created the Fed, seized the interest rate, and that's why 97% of the dollar in your pocket today has lost its value. That hurts the poor the worst because they're, they're on a tight budget to begin with. There's no incentive to save. Every dollar you hide underneath your mattress is depreciates in value. Right? And even if you did try to compete, the IRS will, will find you, kidnap you, and throw you into a cage. There's a guy who tried to do this a few years ago. Real uh, real assets uh, with, with his own currency called the Liberty Dollar. They're in a cage. So you're not allowed to even compete with the U.S. You know, they even have a monopoly on first class mail. Pieces of paper. Communication. You know, FedEx and UPS can only uh, uh, trade in uh, packages. But they can't do pieces of paper. But there was a guy 100 years ago named Lysander Spooner. Uh, because in the Constitution it says that they can have a post office, but it doesn't say they actually have an exclusive monopoly on delivery mail. So this guy found a loophole and tried to compete, called the American Mail Letter Company. And actually because of his competition, he drove the prices down. He's the father of the three cent stamp. Uh, he did much better than USPS. He was more efficient, more effective. Uh, the, 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 the government hated him, so they challenged him in a lot of legal proceedings, and he won a lot of them. But eventually Congress, is, the political rulers, said, all right, we've had enough, we're just going to pass a, pass a law that says you can't compete. So they forced him out of business. This is why a lot of the things we see today, you, you, you don't see what it could be like if there wasn't that violent institution behind it. You know, that's, and that's, that's the matrix, that's the hidden violence behind government. You honestly believe that right now, in your heart of hearts, you believe right now, if the government disappeared, okay, yeah, yeah, if the yeah. government disappeared, that every the society would want to go crazy. Well, there's and no I, government here in this circle. There's no cop but here, there right? Is. Where? But there is just there, hanging Well, well objectively, there's no such thing as a government. Objectively, you can't provide me any evidence, no, any, I, uh, any fact or evidence that the government exists. That. Only individual people exist. And, and I here, agree with you on almost yeah, everything, yeah, yeah. except that I don't think it would work. I think that... I think that anarchy is one of those things that looks good on paper, but we never actually do. This is anarchy right now. Anarchy, by definition, means without political rulers. Like in science, anions and canons, ends mean without. Archy means rulers. Like monarchy, one ruler. Anarchy yeah, means without, without political rulers. We can have rules. 
But that's There's not no even need. like real. This isn't even real anarchy because we know that if I punched her in the face right now, yeah. he would probably call the police and within five minutes it would be here. Yeah, so exactly. it's not even true anarchy because the government, even though it's not here right, right. in the still second, it's still mind. here. Yeah, because you don't have a choice. And just because a slave no, accepts... No, but what I'm saying is yeah. if that if that wasn't there, like yeah. if there, if, she, if he couldn't call the police when I punched her right. in the face. We have, we don't have yeah. real security. Yeah. Yeah, but in yeah. a free market, you can compete to provide a real security. All right, so Detroit. We're going back to Detroit. So the police response time for, for crimes is over an hour, right? Well, because it becomes, unsu yeah. it becomes unsustainable, the city service is shutting down, right? right. So, so there's this guy, actually provided, he started a business recently, his own security businesses. And these neighborhoods are volunteering paying for it. He's not throwing people in cages. For the He's providing real security. And the crime rates in those areas of the communities have dropped because of this business, right? So we can still have security. Uh, all right, so mass transit shut down there too. There's this guy, 25-year-old kid, who bought these four buses, painted them to reflect the geographic regions of the neighborhood, and these buses are picking up wherever you are. There's no centralized planning. There's call him, text him. Uh, there's Wi-Fi in these buses. There's music on these buses. There's BYOB, because there's no more monopoly on law that the state has on there. So you, you can find without a government, you can find have the freedom to be creative and actually provide really fun services that everyone can kind of enjoy instead of for the standardized one that they force us to accept. So we can have rules, we can have a polycentric legal system. At least allow us the freedom to, to end the monopoly and to compete and provide something better, you know? Something that's not going to be harmful and abusive to the people. Yeah. What about the people that are like sick in the head and just want to do bad things? No, but he's saying, he's saying, he's basically saying like we can still have Security. We could still have like police, but not just yeah, yeah, not like, just monopoly. We can yeah. start our own like, like I, I get what you're saying. Like we can start our own way to help people and uh, and protect people instead of just. Because there's still gonna be yeah, yeah, instead of just relying on like what the government provides us with, we could actually like we wanted to start our own security. But right now. You can't, yeah, it, yeah. And that's it, so that's, that's where we need to start, right? Let's start with our own community. Let's turn to our community and turn away from government. Let's start on real foundation with more principles that we already share, right? Let's go in a better direction and away from that, the only knows how to use violence on something, right? Uh, so yeah, actually, you, you did describe it accurately. So the definition of this philosophy is called anarchy. Again, without political rulers. We can have rules. You can have an apartment complex building that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. You know, we can have these communities of preferences. Right? But first, the government only knows how to force one preference into everyone. Right? They call it the greatest good for the majority, but it's also, also the greatest evil for the minority. Right? You don't have a chance to opt out or a chance to say, you know what, I don't like uh, cannabis, I don't, I don't want it in my property, great, I won't force you. Right? But don't force your preference on me. Right? Or it could be on anything. Right? We can coexist with that. But of course, when, when you have a government, you split us off against one another. Now we have to. Now it's, it's more political warfare. You're a Democrat. You're a Republican. You're, you're you know, it's different teams. And, and instead of uniting us and letting go of politics, that's what they want us to do: is to divide us. You know. So let me uh, pass out some pamphlets. You guys are interested. So the organization I'm with is called Liberate RBA. Uh, Liberate our community from the idea that violence will set us free. Uh, not just state violence, but it has to be all violence. You know, the violence is done to each other, the violence, especially the violence is done to children. Otherwise, uh, it just becomes a preference. If you say, like, uh, state violence is wrong, but it's okay for us. Like, that's what they do. They say, you're not allowed to steal. We'll just call it taxes. Now they'll say, you're not allowed to murder. We'll just call it organized war. And then they'll call it a war on drugs. But in reality, it's a war on people. Right? And you look at uh, places like in Portugal, 10 years ago, government got out of the solution on the war on drugs there. They decriminalized. They didn't make it legal, but they didn't make it illegal. And all the drug uses rates from heroin, cocaine, ecstasy, everything went down. Uh, the diseases associated with this stuff went down. Things actually improved. You know, you look at the effects of like the prohibition. Whenever they make anything legal, there's an artificial uh, price that skyrockets in, in that product. And then you invite. You're good. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> all right. I told so you I agree with you, but I think that I think that humanity as a whole, people need to be told what to do. At least some people, maybe not everybody, maybe not you, maybe not me, but there are people who cannot function without being told to do. Because from the moment you're born, your parents tell you what to do. You, right. And then you go to school and the teachers tell you what yeah. to do. And then you go to college and professors tell you what to do. And it's like, yeah, it's after hard. that, if you have full freedom, people want to know what to do. They want to know how to be lost. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, that, that's why we pass up peaceful parenting, because that's kind of where it starts, you know? You can't show me children without showing me individual people too. And a lot of people don't even look at children as people, right? They look at them as like, as sometimes animals, so they're trying to understand, they're trying to understand this world too. They're trying to communicate their needs, right? And so the thing is, so that's where we have to go. Like, for example, like for a child who asks questions and parents say, oh, how dare you? You know, don't talk back to me because I said so, because I said so. That, that teaches a child to create an idea of government because then you don't question government. You don't question that authority. So it has to start from the bottom up. And so I'm just trying to say, like, let's let's let go of the idea that violence will set us free. Let's start finding solutions to, to these problems that we have here today. So uh, yeah, absolutely. That's thank you. Thank you. My name is Cal. Elia. Elia. Pleasure to meet you, Elia. You are. Elisa. Pleasure. <laughs> Mila. Pleasure. You are. Cameron. Cameron. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Logan. Logan. Pleasure to meet you. Simon. Pleasure to meet you. Jacob. Jacob. No problem. Are you going to be here more often? I'm going to be here. I'm going to try to be here every day. For me, it's very important. Uh, I'll probably ask you more questions. All right, man. No, but we do uh, monthly freedom gatherings uh, next Friday. Uh, less than a five-minute bike ride from here. We meet up every month. Freedom discussions and Green West is again trying to find solutions in our community. Outside the state. Yeah. All right, man. You'll find it on the website too. Take good care.